calls me friend. I'm a friend of God. I'm a friend of God. I'm a friend of God. He calls me friend. There ain't nothing like a conversation with God. When I say there ain't nothing like a conversation with God. He pull that stuff out that you don't really want to tell them friends that you sit beside on Sundays and Mondays and Tuesdays that you pick up the phone and call. You tell him the stuff that you don't want nobody to know. I'm so glad that I can call him friends. But understand this, having God as a friend, oh my God, that's a privilege and an honor. But that is a huge sacrifice. But I am so glad that I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God, he called. Hallelujah. 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 Now that's that friend that you can praise. Hallelujah. That's that friend that you can exalt. Hallelujah. That's that friend that you can put on that pedestal. says praise him, praise him, praise him. Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised.
too cute that you don't call his name G. Anybody can just praise him. Praise the name of Jesus. For he's my rock and he's my fortress. He's my deliverer. In him will I trust.
praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, can you put your hands together and give God a praise? Jesus, 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 there is something about that name, Master, <laughs> Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. The summer said, Kings and kingdoms shall all pass away. But there's something about that name, Jesus, 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 there is something about Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain, kings and kingdoms shall all There's something about, for there's something about, there is something about that name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the power of your presence that has come today to share to take part in this worship. God, we ask now that you would cover me afresh so that I may speak truth to power and power to your people. Have thine own way. Use me for thy name's sake. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand for the reading of the word of God? The 28th chapter of Deuteronomy, a writing that is attributed to Moses. Verses 1 through 14. I will be reading today from the English Standard Version of the Bible. And my Bible reads thusly. And if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commandments that I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. Y'all listen to this now. And all the blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall you be, blessed shall be the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your ground and the fruit of your cattle the increase of your herds and the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed you be, shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before you 
They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessings on you in your barns and in all that you undertake. And he will bless you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Verse 9, the Lord will establish you as a people holy to himself as he has sworn to you. If you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. Verse 10, and all the people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord will make you abound in prosperity in the fruit of your womb and in the fruit of your livestock and in the fruit of your ground within the land that you within the land that the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. Verse 12. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the works of your hands. And you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. Y'all ain't shouting like I'm reading. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. And you shall only go up and not down if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, being careful to do to do them. Verse 14, and if you do not turn aside from any of the words that I command you today to the right hand or to the left to go after other gods to serve them, the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord shall last for eternity. As you take your seats, why don't you share the topic of this sermon and tell your neighbor, I've been set up to be blessed. I've been set up to be blessed. Uh, I wish I had about seven praying folk in here to, that would shout with me, I've been set up to be blessed. That the reality is, child of God, as we are walking through this particular sermon series, Living My Blessed Life, it's imperative that you declare into your own life that I've been set up to be blessed. I, I, I just read you what God gave Moses uh, and to give to the children of Israel. And if uh, the children of Israel can be partakers in this, you too, child of God, have an opportunity to walk in in the same covering that God has spoken uh, over their lives, that you too uh, have been set up to be blessed. I know some days you don't feel like you're blessed. I know some days uh, you don't even look like you're blessed or you want to talk blessed or walk blessed, uh, but you got to remember that many are the afflictions uh, of the righteous, but the Bible declares uh, that the Lord will deliver you uh, out of them all, which literally means that you've been set up at the end of the day if you decide to walk in the divine word of God that's been spoken over your life to be blessed. Now listen, if you can't declare it into your own life, you can't expect me to declare it into your life. If you can't believe it, for as my grandmama say, your own self, what makes you think somebody else can believe it for you and here it is that, that Moses lets us know that we've been set up to be black and blessed and when you understand that you've been set up to be blessed you begin to maneuver a little differently than somebody that's been cursed I wish I had a witness in here I start moving I start talking I start living different when I understand the promises that God has placed on my my life. I, I, I start moving. I start talking. I start thinking. I, I start maneuvering different when I understand what Moses is saying in chapter 28. Moses makes some very clear declarations that we've been set up to be blessed. Moses lets us know that you're the head and not the tail. All right. Uh, Moses says that you're above and not beneath. Uh, watch this. Moses said you will lend to many nations uh, and won't borrow from anybody. Uh, I got to help you this morning to let you know uh, if you can't buy into that, uh, it's going to be difficult for you to live uh, your blessed life. 
Uh, Moses starts off though he doesn't dive directly into the blessings he dives first into the contingencies Deacon White uh, of what you have to do uh, in order for you to walk in this fullness that God has promised uh, touch somebody say you got to read the fine print uh, this ain't no naming and claiming believing and receiving uh, prosperity type of gospel uh, but this means that there is a part and a role uh, that you must play in order to get uh, the fulfillment that God has for your life uh, touch yourself say I, I gotta do my part oh you didn't touch yourself like I needed you to touch yourself touch yourself say I gotta do my part that there is a part that I play if I desire to walk in this fullness that Moses is declaring God has in store for it. How many people want the fullness of God? Okay, here it is. Uh, Moses starts off with contingency number one. He said, and uh, if you faithfully obey, I got to start there with your obedience uh, because your obedience, the Bible declares, is far greater than your sacrifice. Uh, I know you think that God is really honoring what you're giving up, uh, but really what God wants to honor is what you'll commit to. <laughs> All right, let, let, let me give it to you. We put more emphasis on what we give up than what we are really truly supposed to be committing to. <laughs> Your sacrifices are temporal. There's no place where I see anybody sacrificing all the time. <laughs> but your obedience is not, your obedience is continual, okay? There's a difference between temporal sacrifice and continual obedience. One is circumstantial and situational. Have you ever bartered with God? Okay, let, 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 let me help you. Lord, if you get me out of this one, I promise I will never dot, dot, dot. Temporal sacrifice versus continual obedience. Moses says, I don't need you to obey sometimes. But what the Lord is looking for is one that will be continually obedient. And sometimes our obedience to God is circumstantial. <laughs> I can be obedient depending upon where I am, what I'm going through, what I'm dealing with, then I'll just slide in line. Uh, it's, 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 it's okay not to clap and say amen, amen because it's not just you. Let me take you to a father of the faith. Paul said, every time I would do good, situational, Evil is present. But in those situations where you have the devil on the left shoulder, like Tom and Jerry, and the angel on the right shoulder, God wants to ensure, here's the contingency, if you gonna have all of what Moses just lined up, uh, that when you have to choose, uh, you will choose to be faithful uh, and obedient to God because you know at the end of the day what God has in store for you is far greater than what you about to get right now. Y'all ain't gonna help me. My cousin Chuck, Deacon Chuck, when we talk about our goals and what we're trying to do with our life, we always talk about the long view. That if I'm going to have Deacon Breon, what God has outlined for my life in this particular text, uh, then I can't have short view goals that I have to be looking for what God has promised me and if it's not right now, I trust God enough to know that sooner or later, I'm gonna arrive 
faith at what he said. Why? Because God's not a man, did he, that he would lie, nor the son of man that he would need to repent, Maxine. And so because God said it, whether I see it or not, it's definitely going to come to pass. Okay, here it is. Faithfully obey, watch this, the voice of the Lord your God. Because I have made a commitment to God, there is a personal relationship that he is now investing in. And in order for me to get the benefits of the blessing of God, I got to deal with the burden of responsibility of what he said. Brian, I tell my daughter, my oldest daughter, uh, there's a way that you can get every dollar out of my pocket. But part of getting my bread is you got to deal with my mouth. Listen, let me help some folks in here. Do, y'all want to stop people from borrowing money from you? If you start putting, if you line your pockets with some lip service, they'll stop borrowing money from you. Because they want your money, but they don't want your mouth. I'm, 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 I'm in the text. I'm in the text, Jimmy. The text says you have to obey the voice of the Lord. If you don't obey, you can't get the blessing. God help me. It's the same thing with my daughter. When she called and asked me for some money, she knows that she got to deal with my mouth. So she would rather struggle than to listen. Oh, some of the saints, Monique, going to catch that after a while, that, that part of the reason that you're struggling so bad is you don't want to listen. And when you learn how to listen and obey the voice of the Lord, he will deliver you from your struggle. Yeah, preach Patrick Kaysen. The, the reality is there is a direct correlation with your obedience to God and your blessing. But because you won't want to hear the Lord's mouth, you stay in your struggle. Because you want to do it your way, you stay in the struggle. The struggle is real. It don't have to be. Tell your neighbor it don't have to be. I'm trying to get out of here, Kim. Listen, you ever met somebody that was always struggling? And then you try to give them some advice and they already know more than you do. And you don't say it to their face because you don't want to be rude, but when you get back in the car, you get off the phone, you say, that's why you're struggling now because you don't want to listen to nobody. My grandma will say, your hot pots know everything. That's why you're struggling. Part of the struggle comes when you want to do it your way instead of listening to sound counsel. The text says that if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, watch this, being careful to do all his commandments that I command you today, watch this, the Lord God will set you up high above the nations of the earth. The, rally, the reality is the Lord doesn't want to have to always pick you up from the bottom when he's divinely appointed your life to be set up from the top. Uh, we've been hustling backwards. We've been on the bottom so long that we don't even know how to act 
when we get on the top. And the Lord says in the text, I'm setting you up if you listen to me to be above the nations, not above your community, not above your city, not above your country, but above the nations. Plural meaning more than one. And when God is speaking, he's talking about all of them. So I have no reason to be living beneath my privileges when I've already been set up to be on top. The trouble that I have is that people have faith to believe part of the book, but not all of the book. If God can heal your body of cancer, don't you know that God will give you the ends and means so you won't have to struggle to pay your light bill? I ain't deep, I'm just not dumb. It's, 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 I, think that, I think that this should make sense to us uh, if we apply it according to what the word has said. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm get out of here. I got two minutes left, I'm done. Verse two says, and all these, I, I promise you I'm not gonna preach all 14 verses. I just read it so that you can really identify with it and put it in your spirit. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. You don't have to look for no blessing. Just be obedient. You don't have to ask nobody to be a blessing to your life. Just be obedient. You ain't got to come to, I'm going to church today to get me a blessing. When you obey the voice of the Lord, you don't have to look for blessings. Blessings come looking for you. Church folk, don't y'all wait for me to hoop. I'm not going to hoop. I'm not going to hoop today. Listen, you, 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 I didn't come to entertain you. I came to educate you. That the reality of part of our struggle is that we've been hustling backwards. There's no way you can look for blessings without being obedient. You can't even expect. You can't expect it because if God does it, it would be out of line with his word. I, I, I need y'all to catch this. The, the, the one thing that God cannot do is go against God's word. So if you're expecting God to do something that's contrary to his word, then you have empty expectations. It's 11 o'clock. Set up to be blessed. I, I know you was waiting on the gravy. Can't put gravy on everything. Can't put gravy on everything. I need you to understand and apply this to your life that Moses says if I faithfully obey God consistent in my obedience to God and follow his commandments that God has set me up we'll give it to that testimony quick testimony of one of our members um, I talked to her one week and she's here so hopefully she doesn't mind if I tell her testimony uh, I didn't ask her but I'm just gonna tell her I was getting trouble later I called her one week she was like pastor this job is too much I'm giving this job up went in and I told him the job is too much I'm giving this job up I, I quit she quit her job I said well what you gonna do she said the Lord told me quit my job so I'm gone I said wow 
So I talked to her like a week later. She said, Pastor, let me tell you what happened. I went in to turn in my resignation. And as I was leaving out, I, my phone started ringing. It was another company calling me about a job. And when I answered the phone, they offered me a job. And I said, well, I didn't even apply for the job. Y'all got, listen. The Lord told her to quit a job. She didn't know that she was going to get another job. Some of y'all looking at me like, I want to quit my job. That's why you're struggling. It's tight, but it's right. I'm going to tell you the truth. That's why you're struggling. Because you're waiting for God to make sense. Faith don't make sense. Faith, faith, faith. Now faith is the substance. Substance means tangible. Substance of things hoped for. Right? I'm hoping that this book is in my hand. The evidence of things not seen. So I walk around like I got a book in my hand even though I ain't got a book in my hand until a book gets in my hand. That don't make sense. So she told the people that called her, she said, well, listen, I just quit a job so I'm not ready to just walk into a job. You know what the people told her? That's okay, we gonna hold a job for a month. Monique, if I'm lying, I'm flying right now. We gonna hold a job. <laughs> she here. She is here. So if I'm lying, she gonna tell y'all past the line. We gonna hold a job, Reggie, for a month. So she took a month off. And then went to her new job. That was what, June? That was June. So, you know, we opened the church back up Father's Day. So I talked to her last Sunday. That was the first Sunday in July. She said, Pastor, guess what? Watch this. Watch this. She said, they fired my supervisor and gave me a promotion. <laughs> you ain't been in the job 30 days. Y'all, she right there in the back. This is Felicia Old. She right there in the back. I just look, she right there. Like, I'm not lying. She quit a job, took 30 days off. The Lord gave her another job, worked there for 30 days, and got a promotion. I tell my daughters I tell my daughters I said listen I told my oldest daughter she was bringing a little boy to the house don't talk to him like that you don't need to scare him he just gonna pull up outside I said no he ain't I said I said bring that joker now I said you my daughter And I need him to see all that I provide for you. And if you can't give her what I give her, leave her where she at. Because I ain't got no problem in taking care of her. That you don't got to go out there looking for anything. Because I'm your daddy and I'll provide you with everything. In the same way we shout about that for our kids, that's what the Lord is saying to you. You ain't got to go looking for nothing. All you got to do is listen to your daddy. You ain't got to go searching for nothing. All you got to do is listen to your daddy. 
your daddy already told you he gonna give you everything that you need. Now listen, ain't none of y'all miss no meals during COVID. The light stayed on. If you got sick, he made you better. Touch your neighbor and say, listen to your daddy. <laughs> Being a father, man, has taught me so much about God. So much about God. See, you fall in trouble when you stop listening to the father. When you're going to create your own way. I'm so grateful that I know what God purposed in my life to be and to do. That I don't have to go seeking and searching trying to figure out who I am. What I'm supposed to do. The Lord has already told me. Now it's just up to me to just walk in it. And when you walk in it, you don't got to worry about doors being open because you, when you get there, he'll make a way. He'll make a way. Don't forget that you've been set up to be blessed, man. You, you don't have to struggle. Come on, declare it to yourself. I don't have to struggle. have to obey come on say it say it with your chest now I don't have to struggle I just have to obey don't live your life as a hard-headed Christian that the only time you get to experience heaven is when you die preach Patrick Casey say it for the people in the back don't live your life like a hard-headed Christian the only time you get to experience heaven is when you die. God desires you to experience heaven right here on earth. Right here on earth. But it's up to you to obey. You can't do what you want to do and think God is just going to be pleased with you. and thank you for taking the time to tune in to the Bethany Experience Virtual Worship. Uh, we pray that something was said or done in this moment to help you along life's journey. Now, if you desire to support the Bethany Baptist Church, there are three ways in which you can do it. First, you can give via Givelify. All you have to do is download the Givelify app and look for Bethany Baptist Church. Secondly, you can log on to our website, www.experiencebethany.com. And lastly, you can stop by the church, 2587 Campostella Road in the beautiful city of Chesapeake. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you and we'll see you in the morning.